guys. Um, <laughs> I just watched you know, season five of The Expanse this week and I, you know, remain obsessed. Congratulations <laughs> both for doing an amazing job. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I just was wondering what it was like for you both to craft this adversarial family dynamic that we're finally getting to see on screen and to add all of those years of history that you have in your performances. Um, it was a challenge for sure. Um, obviously we had some great source material and also four seasons of uh, seeds being planted that I think, you know, if you watched it from the beginning and I mean, even if you went back and watched now, there is stuff from season one um, in Naomi's life and things that are happening, things she's hiding that literally get to play out in season five. So, um, you know, I, I mean, Keon and Josiah were incredible to work with. And the moment I saw Josiah was like, this is my son. So <laughs> imagination wise, I felt like we were a family because I looked at Keon on one side and looked at Josiah and I was like, he's our child, like he looks like us. Yeah. So we that really helped quite, quite a lot actually to imagine that we were a family and we were a unit. And then, you know, Keon's an incredible actor, so is Josiah. And we all just went in for it and everybody done the work and was focused on the work and, and kind of rooted our work in, in what we knew and, 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 what we kind of thought this would be like, what the history would be like. And we found that it was probably rooted in love more than anything else, a very teenage passionate kind of, you know, that first love, the one that's not really like anything else. And we kind of ran with it. What say you, Gion? <laughs> yeah, uh, we definitely did run with it. We, 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 we ran pretty far. I, you know, I think that we, we often think of ourselves as unitary creatures, you know, because we're here and now and we have our past, but we think that we are what we are now. But there are moments where we're reminded that we are actually all of those at the same time, simultaneously. And I think that we were able, Dom and I, to find how we are existing in the present now while holding space for that teenage connection and everything in between. And it's almost like, um, like she's talking about that real teenage love. It's almost like if you connect to those formative moments that were the most real for you, you can almost invisibly plot the trajectory of what got you to where you are. And I think that his, uh, Marco's relationship with, with Naomi was one of those formative experiences. I think this is the most real connection he's ever had. And I think that that break made him who he is, who we meet in season four and season five, willing to take the measures that he's willing to take and, and, and underneath all of those strategies and political moves and moving chess pieces is a heart that's had certain traumas and experiences and keep holding those layers simultaneously, which Dom is able to do. And we were able to connect on all those layers, I think made the scenes um, that much more multidimensional. And I think that's how, it, it, that's how you make it work. I love that. Amazing. Um, and speaking of, you know, all the different layers, even though this is not a love triangle, Holden's presence is just kind of there in between you guys in, in many scenes. How do you, e I guess, how do you each connect to or react to Holden's existence, even when he's not there? Who's Holden? <laughs> so like that. Well, I think for Naomi, like, when you kind of meet Marco and see them together in this season, you kind of get a gauge of maybe why she's gone for a guy like Stephen. Mm. Um, Stephen, hold it. That's so bad. It's okay, um, both, both. I think both, you know, he is that. But I think what you see is like, what she finds in Holden is like the safety and the kind of settledness and the kind of like non-radicalness. Um, I would even go as far to say that maybe that relationship is not 
as passionate in the same way that her one with Marco was. And obviously they don't have a child together. So there's just like this real um, kind of light bulb moment, I think of being like, oh, this is, you know, it's, I, I always find it with people when you see their, their partner from before and you're like, oh, you went the other way. This was, this whatever happened here happened. So then your next one was like the complete opposite. And so I just think what you see is, is not only Naomi um, fighting to save her son in her own head, save him. She's also kind of in, in between these two, this thing she ran away from and this thing she now is. Um, and Marco represents one and Holden represents the other. And, and I think what's gorgeous about the interactions with Marco is there's always that thing of like, oh, is he going to manage to pull her this way away from right. that, that Holden safety she's created or... Um, you know, is she, is she always there? She's just come for her son. And I think what's beautiful about the scenes is, is you're never sure. And I think, I think Naomi's working that out as well, actually. I think she, it's all a bit, it's the most danger she's ever been in emotionally. Marco is dangerous for her. Definitely. So yeah. Well, you both <laughs> did amazing. And I cannot wait for everyone to see those dangerous and exciting scenes. So <laughs> have a great day. Thank you, Tassiana.